number one Georgia Bowl dogs against the TCU Horned Frogs. Uh, TCU somehow in the national championship. Don't that? I love this, it. It's I great. It. It's fantastic. It was the best thing for the college football playoff because if there was another another fucking SEC or Big Ten team in this goddamn right. final, I was gonna lose we got, it. We got an outlier, right? We finally got an outlier. Someone broke through the broke through the fourth wall. Exactly. So, a couple directions I kind of want was thinking about going in. Number one, are you concerned about Georgia after like they got a nail biting win? Didn't look like the Georgia that we've seen before. I feel like some people are hitting the panic alarm a little bit on Georgia, but not necessarily sure. Because, like, this feels like a different Georgia team. I know people are saying, like, back-to-back and all this type of stuff, but this does not remind me of, like, the national title-winning team. No, just from you last year. Lost, even though they still have talent, they lost so much talent, right? They do still have Brock Bowers, which he is a very good tight end. He's the second-best tight end in the country. I'm sorry. You say whatever you want, Georgia fans. Michael Mayer is better than him. He is. Whatever. If Michael Mayer played in the SEC, everyone would suck a D too, but he doesn't. So whatever. Um, Brock Bauer still is a very good player. He, he's another one who will be a first round pick when he comes out. It is what it is. They have some other like assets, but it, I, and I know it's like taboo to say it anymore, but Stetson Bennett is what Stetson Bennett is. And he can hold you back. And he held them back a little in that first that first half last week. Now he was he helped lead them back too. He's a baller. He's a gamer. He's like Clifford. He's never going to throw in the towel. He's probably a little bit better of a passer. I don't know. He's maybe. definitely yeah, like a deep. He ball doesn't passer. make the same mistakes. I guess is what you could say. Yeah, Bennett. Bennett is he's not. He's a better deep ball passer. He's not going to commit as many turnovers. He's not going to be as reckless as Sean Clifford can be sometimes. Um, but at the same time, Bennett isn't necessarily going to move out of the pocket and just like fire one down the sidelines and like paint the sidelines and, you know, put it right where it needs to be. It'll And that's where um, like Georgia really got fucked up in the first half against Ohio state from what I saw, like just rewatching some of the game was he was holding on to the ball for lo- really long stretches of time, which is not how, he should be – that's not the best version of Stetson Bennett. The best version of Stetson Bennett is, like, get the ball out quickly, um, make quick decisions, and get it to your playmakers in open space or use the ground game to make the defense play up and then take the shots over the top after that and know the situations when you have to take the deep shots. So, for me, I'm, I was when I was rewatching the Georgia-Ohio State game, I was like – Okay, I know TCU doesn't have a wide receiver like Marvin Harrison Jr., obviously. But they but do have some guys on that outside that can – that they had some – They have some jets on their there. legs. They have jets on their legs. That, That's that how – Jaquan Johnson or something his name is or – Quentin Johnson, I believe. Quentin. Quentin. Jaquan is on two – was the Tulane guy, I think, or something. Somebody. <laughs> he had someone around there. Um, So, TCU obviously needs to utilize their speed on the offensive side and on the outside to really hit the Achilles heel of the Georgia's defense, in my opinion, which is that defensive backfield. Because that defensive, those defensive backs were struggling against Ohio State, and it wasn't just Marvin Harrison Jr. And C.J. Stroud was scrambling outside the pocket and really making the, the backs cover their guys for long uh, extended periods of time, which I think can really benefit TCU because Max Duggan – is not a guy who's hesitant to sling it every now and then and take chances and stuff like that. So with Georgia, I think they should be not scared of TCU, but they have some holes that they need to fill because I don't think that you're going to be able to just pressure Max Duggan the entire time. They're going to, if if Georgia brings pressure, TCU has some guys that if they call the a right, a halfback screen or a wide receiver bubble screen at the right time, that could break for a long, long touchdown, and all of a sudden, Georgia staring down a seven, seven point deficit, or maybe something happens like the opening against the uh, against Michigan, where TCU's defense generates a turnover, and then they take it to the house, and now all of a sudden, on the first first possession or early first drive of Georgia or second drive, Georgia staring down at a tie game or a fourteen point hole. So, 
they got some question marks. This is not the same George. This is not the same certainty. Like George is George is the number one team in my opinion. Like there's a game plan here for TCU to take advantage of. And and I, I this had to been a point. I I hundred percent. That's I what you said. I agree with all the way. It, it, it's very well said. And you're right. Like he is not someone that can sit there in the pocket and just wait to pick you apart. I think he gets himself in trouble because I think he I think he thinks he has a stronger arm than he does. And if you notice, there's a few there was a few throws, including one on the game winning drive that he got away with where he threw it into a window. And I'm like, what the hell was he thinking there? Like threw it. And luckily, the Ohio State linebacker reacted too late and it went right. But it was like he was throwing that ball like someone who can like just sling it. Like who was who he has had it. like he he thought he was like Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen yeah, just essentially that thing. yes he thought he was one of those guys or or Philip Rivers you know back in the day or Herbert he 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 literally was throwing that ball and I think that's where he can get when he stays and like and I said it's taboo to like criticize him because Georgia fans protect him like how much more does this guy need to do and it's right they're, they're right like he won a national championship already he's their quarterback for a reason he's their leader. But there are times, and the, every time that they've been in trouble this year in a game, last week against Ohio State, against Missouri, it's because he has played, he hasn't played within himself. When he remembers to stay calm, stay within himself, take, not take what the defense gives you, like take a little bit more, but look and just know, like, hey, that's not there. I got to get out and either just get some positive yards or throw it away and live to see another day. Make the smart and play. Don't, that sounds, don't take right. any rec, unneeded chances or unneeded. And that rest. sounds boring, but it's not, he's not a game manager. He's a little bit more than a game manager, but he, in essence, he needs to be like a glorified game manager. And that's when George is at its best. When their defense, when their offense is doing what they need to do and they're, you know, they're running the ball. That is one thing that I wish Georgia did more of against Ohio State was just running the ball. Like Kenny yeah. McIntosh looks like a stud, and he only got seven carries for 50, for 60, 80 something yards and didn't get into the end zone. I'm like, really? Like, if I'm Georgia in that Ohio State game, I'm saying to myself, okay, I want Ohio State's offense off the field as much as possible. And I, I don't want Marvin Harrison Jr. on the field. My defense needs a rest because they're just getting torched right now. That's when you turn the ball to Kenny McIntosh or any other quarterbacks or any other running backs, excuse me. And that's what I felt like Georgia needs needed to do more in order to avoid that nail-biting situation. And they definitely have to do that against TCU because I don't think TCU is going to be bringing much pressure in this game. I expect them to really sit back in coverage and, like, keep all the receivers in front of them. And that's going to leave the box or the middle of the field or the outside open because Georgia was utilizing those read options, those fake jet sweeps to really gash Ohio state's defense. I think TCU is going to set up similarly where it's going to be a lot of drop coverage um, and not taking many risks to give Georgia's uh, wide receivers a chance on like one-on-one coverage to, to bust a play open wide. Uh, for a big game. TCU wants you to get into a shootout with them. They want you to be fucking stupid and think, oh, you want to start trading points? Cool. My my coach or our coach is one of the, you know, main disciples of the air raid offense. You know, he learned from the two best to ever teach it in Hal Mummy and Mike Leach. Like he, that's exactly what he wants you to do. They want you to think you're smart enough to get, they're big enough to get into a shootout and they will burn you all day long if they need to because they have not only do they have a quarterback that is a, just a gamer and is a baller and will take the shots and can run and can pass but they have two excellent running backs in DeMarcado and Keandre Miller and then as you already said they have Quentin Johnson they have Hudson and then you can also string DeMarcado out onto the outside and if you need to and Max Duncan Max Duncan is a great runner himself for what he is and you wouldn't said to look at him as white ginger, like you're telling me this guy. No, he's a really good runner. He's very good at getting yards when he needs to and went on design run plays. And what got Georgia into trouble last week, if you remember, Matt, watching those highlights, anytime CJ Stroud got outside of the pocket and had to use his legs, it is when they got so many of their big plays. 
is when he got after it was like Monday with U, U, USC and Tulane. Every time, you know, Caleb Williams was really good that game anyway, but he burned them every time he got outside of that pocket and was able to use his legs and throw on the run. C.J. Stroud did the same thing with Georgia. When they were able to keep him corralled, okay. Duggan can throw from the pocket, probably, I think, a little bit better. I think C.J. Stroud is extremely overrated. I, I just don't know when we're going to stop with these Ohio State quarterbacks and the love they get. That said, Duggan – can get out he can stay in there he can run they are potent they they and and it's not just those guys at a mission it's not just demarcado and miller and johnson and hudson and 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 duggan they will have a guy that you just haven't even heard of burn you for like five catches and a a buck 50 because this is the air raid everyone matters everyone has speed and there was every time michigan got back into that game last week it was like boom no i'm just gonna hit I'm going to hit Quentin Johnson over the middle for a catch. He's going to put on the Jets, boom, turn, and go, touchdown. Oh, you know what? Never mind. I'm going to hit I'm going to hit Demarcado. Mar- De We're going to run draw play. He's going to be patient. He's going to hit the hole, hit to the outside, 50 yards, he's gone. Like, they love a big play. They're not going to be scared. Sonny Dykes is the perfect coach for this. He's not going to be scared from the moment. I honestly would not be surprised if TCU won this game. Final score, fuck it. I'll go TCU 37 Georgia, 30. I think it's going to be a one-score game. I'm going to say TCU, 45. Georgia, 38.